Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I feel very honored to be here and uh, also humbled. And uh, this is some of your story. I just think you all lived an amazing life. And uh, I'm here, I feel very privileged to share m about a little bit about my life, uh, my journey from east to west. I have a lot of slideshows, so I'm going to get started. And um, I will make sure I save time for questions. I was born in Wuhan, the central part of China. Oh, what did I do? I just turned this off. And that was me. I was five years old. And this is at nine years old. That's when I, I lived through the Chinese culture revolution. So um, I wrote the book. It's a fictionized, but 80% of the story is based on my life. That was the one uh, book took me seven, and seven years to write. So I'm just going to read you a few short passages so you get a little glance about my life, living in China, my journey. So I'll give you an idea of my journey from east to west. The summer of 1972, before I turned nine, danger began locking on doors all over China. My parents worked as a doctor in city hospital number four. It was the best hospital in Wuhan, a big city in central China. My father was a surgeon. My mother, a traditional doctor of Chinese medicine, treated patients with herbs and acupuncture needles. When my dog got sick, I treated her with candies. This is all true. So like I said, 85% story is based on my life. We lived in a three-story brick building in the hospital compound near the Yangtze River, the longest river in China. So our apartment is the number one on the second, on the second floor. It used to be a missionary um, hospital. My father was trained by a Western missioner. So that's why during the Cultural Revolution, he was accused as an American spy. So he was put in jail. And he was my hero. I'm very close to my father. When you read my book, you can see um, I have a kind of a difficult relationship with my mother. So my father was very dear to me. So about uh, and 10 years when he died of cancer, that's when I feel really lost. I feel like I lost touch with China, lost touch with my root. And I always thought I was a very upbeat person. That's the first time I feel like I was very depressed. So for me to, so I tried to find a way to cope with the grief. And what I did is I joined the grief workshop. What I find out is I paid a couple hundred dollars. I realized with a grief workshop is everybody just get together to cry. And I said, no, I don't need to cry with your people. I can cry at home. So that's what inspired me to write this book. It was a very difficult book to write. Um, it's really, uh, many times I have to stop because the memory was very painful. At that time, I was a pretty uh, established children's book writer. I write uh, picture books. So this is like a new genre for me to branch in. And uh, I am writing my second language. I struggle even today. There's days I wonder what I'm doing and uh, writing in my second language. I could have had a different career. But I really enjoy it. I cannot imagine what else would have helped me to get in through that grief period. So that's me. I was 18 years old, and my publisher decided to put me on the cover. I was quite surprised. And uh, like I said, this book brought back a lot of painful memory. That days when I think I feel like I live in a two different life. And this is one of the forbidden books I smuggled out of uh, China when I left China. During the Cultural Revolution, we are forced to read all the propaganda books. <coughs> and I have two secret books survived the Red God search. And uh, so what that, at the time for me to tell who's my best friends is who were willing to trade that secret book with me. So in this book, this is just old English textbook. And I remember very clearly there's a two short story in that. One is about Pompeii. Another one is uh, Pyramid, Egypt. I asked my father. Uh, at a very difficult time when there's no food and no electricity. I said, I wish one day I can go there. And my father looked at me. He said, I'm sure you can, dear. But at the time, just seems it's such a distant dream. We're not even allowed to leave our city in the home without. Be and uh, also, uh, very soon, the um, government sent a political officer lived, moved into our home, lived in my father's study. So we were spied day and night. And this is uh, one of my notebook. When I have nothing to read, I read my notebook. So every time I get a good book, I would quickly copy down the passage. And then when I was desperate for some good things to read, and I will 
take this out underneath my bed cover and then read this at night. Radio. <coughs> I want to just read you a very short passage here. And this is after the revolution. We finally have enough money to buy a radio because during the revolution, the Red God can, they destroyed the old radio we have. Daddy, what are you listening to? I whispered. Father turned off the radio and lift up the corner of the blanket. His shadow on the wall turned into a sitting Buddha. The voice of America, he whispered. These days, we had to whisper a lot, especially when we talk about the Golden Gate Bridge, listen to the voice of America, or held English <coughs> lessons. I crawled onto his lap and snuck with him under the blanket. That's how we get the idea of what's happening in the world or in really in China is by listening to the voice of America and every time when we listen we have to put a blanket over ourselves and our and then the radio and the radio was jammed too so it was very very hard to make it out of, you know daddy why do people want to go to America I lift off the blanket Shh. father put a finger to his lips we glanced toward Kamer Lee's apartment since father had asked about Dr. Wang Kamer Lee no longer locked on the little door he ignored me when we met in the hallway. It was as if a bad magic trick had t changed him into a funny <coughs> monkey into a poison snake. They want to enjoy freedom, Father whispered. What's freedom? I whispered back. Father led me to my bedroom. Freedom is being able to read what you want and to say what you think. I saw sadness in his eyes. I want to ask him if people disappear in America, but I didn't. Talking about Dr. Wang made father unhappy. So Dr. Wang was my father's best friend and also educated by the missionary, Dr. Uh, Smith. And he was our neighbor upstairs. And one day he just disappeared. And uh, for many, through few years, and every morning I get up, I have this fear. We just don't know which our neighbor will be disappeared. My biggest nightmare is my father will be gone. So this is uh, how we listen to radio. When the book came out, I did 18 city media tour, the radio tour, and I do this all the time. It was no big deal. But when the Voice of America called me and they're going to do a half hour interview with me, I just cannot sleep that night. I just thought my father would be so proud to listen to me talk about the Voice of America. And after the revolution, my father is the one on the left. He became the director of the surgical department in the hospital. And um, he uh, came to United, uh, you know, went to United States. We're not in the States, I keep And he really missed his patient. He insisted he went back <coughs> to China, and then he had a lung cancer. He passed away in the hospital. He practiced most of his life. And for a long time, I do not understand him, why he wants to go back to China, why he did not want to stay in the state, until uh, much later, when I finished my book, I went back to China, I saw the people live around the house because the hospital is located in a very poor part of the city. And he helped many, many poor people. He just feel very compassionate, passionate about his patient. And this is a three-story brick building. And the inside the department, the behind that door is uh, what Comrade Lee moved into our home. And when you read the book and just, uh, you will see I described this apartment and when my family no longer lived there, people was kind enough, let me go in there, I took the picture. This is a long alleyway, every day I have to walk down this long alleyway to go to school. Um, you know, in the midst of the story, I talk about my father was arrested, he was sent to the, the, the city jail for being the, because he spoke against the government. He was feel, you know, he's a few um, doctors feel <coughs> disagree with Chairman Mao, international people. So they kept him in the city jail. The interesting thing is because they only trust my father to perform on them, the Communist Party leader. So they didn't send my father to neighbor camp like many doctors. They kept him nearby. And later on, we find out. So whenever they need surgery performed, they would take my father out of jail to perform the surgery, then put him back. And so, um, you know, in the book, I talk a lot, about, you know, later on when I find I feel very resentful. I said, how could you treat those people? Their children are the one pick on me at the school. They're the one waiting at the end of this long alleyway. Every day when I go to school, they would attack me. And my father said, he said, I'm a doctor. Whoever lying on my surgical bed, they are my patient. I have to treat them with compassion. And that's truly what he did. 
So I really respect that. Now when I look back, so this is what I have to go through. Every day when I go to school, um, I'm ready to fight because I never know who's going to attack me on the other side. This is my school, and the still you see the Communist Revolutionary Slogan 206 when I went back, just as I remembered. My classroom was the first one on the first floor. The vendor on the street, this is what I show you. This, uh, the, the hospital is located in a very poor part of the city in 06. Like their life has not changed much, just as I remembered. And this is a vendor with sell steam bun on the street. Every morning, my mother gave me five cents. I would buy a steam bun and walk to school. So as you can tell, food is a very, very important to me. And um, I think about the food all the time. I always tell people that's because I feel I never had enough to eat. And uh, so in the story, in all my writing, and food was a very, I use food as a metaphor to tell my story. And so this is at the end of the book when they published, my publisher hosts a huge banquet in New York. They featured every dishes I mentioned in a revolution, it's not a dinner party. And uh, we ate for three and a half hours. It was wonderful. This is my publisher, my editor, all the reviewer, and the writing. So I worked on this for seven years. And uh, when people say, what is that like? I said, well, this is the first thing I did every morning when I get up. Because at night, I dreamed about China, and I thought about my parents. And uh, so when I get in the morning, I work on the story. And uh, the last thing I did at night, I work on the book. So I want to, yeah, so this is, um, it paid off. The book was uh, auctioned in uh, New York. Five publishers was fighting for the book. Actually, the fifth year when I was working on the book, I have one publisher who really wants it. And uh, my agent at the time said, Ian, you should sell to this editor. They're wonderful. They're a great house. I said, I have two questions. First is, what are they going to do to help me promote the book? Second, what can I edit it to make this a better book? And she said, oh, the editor said the book is perfect. Nothing you need to do. I said, no, that's not good enough. I know my book is not good enough because it's my first book. I need somebody ha to help me bring to another level. So of course she's upset with me. So we went our separate way. And I worked for two more years on the book by myself. I worked very hard. Every sentence I probably rewrote over 100 times. So, and then when the book finally um, was sold, it was like three, I sent it out myself. Three publishers wanted it. I was on lecture on another cruise ship. I got an email. And that's when I realized I cannot do this auction myself. So I uh, emailed one of the agents I know. I said, oh, can you help me? And uh, I need a PR plan, and I need a, I'm not going with somebody to pay me the most money. I wanted the publisher really, really help me to bring this to the next level, which she did. I was very thankful. And not only they bought my, this book, and they bought a the second book, which I did not have a second book at the time. I have no idea wh what I would want to write a second book. I was exhausted working on this book. <laughs> and, uh, and my agent said, don't worry, and they want to pay you half of the advance. Just take the money, and we'll figure it out later. I said, I am Chinese. I don't like own people's money. And <laughs> I, I feel very uncomfortable. So anyway, she made me da da that, and um, I will tell you what I did. So anyway, the book has translated into many different languages. I did a tour in UK, and I won practically every award I can win. And uh, my sister was putting this together, and he said, you know, run out of space. I said, don't worry. I think th this is good enough. <laughs> so all the awards <laughs> is on this. And I still getting an award. And it was enrolled as a one book, one county in California. So the whole county was reading the book that summer. I, I can't even remember. I spoke to all those libraries. And this is at the UC Davis University. So a lot of students now they use this as part of the curriculum and textbook. All the students read my book. It was really touching. You know, they will come to me with a note and uh, with a sticky pad and ask me questions to sign their book. I went to the school. They have a multiple choice exam based on my book. And I look at that. I said, I don't even remember all the detail. I'm sure I will fail this test. And <laughs> you know, the really rewarding aspect of this for me is this story to show the read. You know, it's a young. It's my journey. I was started at nine years old. I was a very spoiled little girl. I didn't want to eat all the strange food my mother made for me. But as the time goes by, I have to go to fight for food to survive. So I'm going to uh, read you this passage. After one instant at the market, I learned to get hold of the goods I wanted before showing my ration ticket. A big-ear boy who was half a head taller than me 
offered to trade a small bag of peanuts for two of my egg rushing tickets. I was so happy to see the prompt peanut. Without thinking, I took out my rushing ticket inside my shoe. The boy grabbed them and ran. With one shoot in hand, I chased him for two long blocks. When I caught up with him, I grabbed him by the back of his collar. I screamed and yelled and hit him with my shoe until he gave me the bag of peanuts. That night, Mother and I enjoyed peanut and the red day soup. My mother is a traditional Chinese doctor, just for you. With a smile on her face, mother told me the soup helps the blood circulation. I nodded and I pushed down the urge to tell her how getting the peanut had already made my blood run. <laughs> All summer, I often wondered what father would think if he saw me fighting and yelling at the market. This is the time my father was in jail and I have to help my mother to get the food to survive. So when I visiting school, I get invited to all over the world to speak to the student. This is at a very poor school. Uh, when I was talking during my lecture, all the students was very quiet. They didn't say anything, ask questions. I was very unsure. I said, well, they must not like what I have to say. And the funny thing is the minute I finished my presentation, they all just came surrounded me. The girls start touching my clothes and uh, some girl even touched my hair. And uh, two girls asked me, said, what can we do to be like you? I was confused a little bit. I said, you mean you want to be a writer? She said, no, we want to be just like you, strong. And that was the best moment to be a writer. I feel like all seven years hard work paid off. So this is at the one event. I didn't sign all the books, and I was just uh, took a picture. There was thousands of copies. Many times I, and this is in Washington D.C. They, uh, the whole class read a book, and uh, Dr. Wang, that's the doctor, was uh, disappeared. He was sent to neighbor camp. His uh, wife did not survive. He survived. He was still practiced medicine in China, and when I received the first copy of my book, he was the first one I saw. I. Uh, my book, by the way, is banned in China. I was just uh, lecture on in China, and um, my uh, uh, publisher told me, say, in, don't even think about take your book in China. If you get caught, you'll be in big trouble. So what I did is, I know this <laughs> could be difficult, so I wrapped the book with many layers, different clothes, sent it to my brother first. And uh, my brother rode a bicycle and delivered the book to Dr. Wang. I just thought, you know, when I saw this picture, I just s s thought, you know, if my father's alive and this is, he would be very proud. So it was like a very satisfying feeling to see that. So China, what's China today like? I was in northern China. You still see Chairman Mao's statue. And uh, my son with me, I took him after the, the book and uh, we travel around China. This is at one of the farmer's home. They still have Chairman Mao's picture at the center place. I. Uh, really want to teach my son about China. And because in, the, in today's China, you talk to the younger generation, they don't even know about cultural revolution. The Chinese government don't want to talk about it. And I do not, I think people should remember, so the history will not repeat. So I took my son uh, for a whole summer. We traveled, we followed Chairman Mao's long march path. This is on the, the climb that Tall mountain. I was very glad I was in good shape because he's a cross country runner and he walked so fast. And then, <laughs> One of our friends hosting us for three weeks and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, three days. After we left, she said, I slept for one week. I was exhausted. I said, our journey hasn't even started yet. Only if you had trouble with this. So the Golden Gate Bridge is a very important symbol through the book. So after the book came out, I got a call from San Francisco Chronicle. They wanted to do a big feature story about me. And... Um, they said, where would you like your picture taken? Can we do it in your kitchen? I said, no, no, no. People take pictures of me cooking all the time. How about the Golden Gate Bridge? So I am going to read your... So, oh, by the way, we took over 100 photos at the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, I have heard the story many times. Dr. Smith gave father the picture, the Golden Gate Bridge picture, as a farewell pr present, present before going back to San Francisco. He had invited father to go to work in a hospital near the Golden Gate Bridge, but the father decided to stay to help build a new China. So that's um, the bridge. And also, very important is um, the bridge is like uh, my dream. As a little girl, I just keep thinking one day, if I can go near the Golden Gate Bridge, that must be a heavenly place. 
Despite all this, Father told us we should look for joy even during hard times. The night when the e electricity to our building was cut off and the Kamer Lee was not home, Father closed the window and lit a small candle. He taught me how to dance the two steps and the walls I was quick to learn. I asked Father to teach me the tango, but he said our living room was too small to practice. When father and mother used to tango at the parties, everyone had stopped to watch. Mother wore her long silk, silk dress, white silk dress. As she gracefully swung out her leg, I could see her shiny silver high heels. They can't keep people from dancing forever. Someday, I will teach you at the dance hall. Father made a graceful turn with one hand spread out and the other resting on his hip. I dreamed of wearing a red silk dress and dancing with a handsome young surgeon. So that was my dream. But uh, I figured it out. I don't want to dance with a young surgeon very early on because I dated a couple young surgeon work under my father and I realized they all have to work at the weekend. So I said, no, 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 that's not going to work. I want to make sure I find someone can dance with me whenever I want to dance. So <laughs> now I didn't marry a surgeon. So that's the picture. We took over 100 photos. And he kept asking me, are you happy with this? I said, no, no, no. He got him very nervous until this one. And that's what we used. And I'm just very happy. Th this dancing, it was in my red skirt in front of Golden Gate Bridge. So like I said, I uh, had a two book contract. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, everyone wanted me to write a sequel, especially after the book winning all this award. But uh, I, uh, I really want to write about chi modern China. And so instead about coming out to criticize the Chinese government about what's happening in today's China, I again, I decided to use the food and the ghost as a metaphors to tell the story about modern China. So I see the huge disparity between the rich and the power in today's China. And this is the picture of uh, the street right outside the hospital compound. The, the, the people are poor, the, the, they're half naked walk around because they have no electricity and it's really hot in Wuhan. So this is a, uh, What's their next? So their life since haven't changed yet, even though the rich people are very, very wealthy. So, and you see the wealthy kids, they go to the summer camp to lose weight, where you see backing children on the street. So that's what I decided, and oh, the one of the story, I was inspired after visiting this very sacred uh, Buddhist temple. I was sailed down the Yangtze River and I spent uh, two hours climbing up the mountain. I was quite disappointed when I get there, I saw the monk was just ignoring us and he was there sitting counting money. So I started doing the research, find out all the corruption going around in the Buddhist temple. So that's what I did, the uh, Banquet for Hungry Goats. It, it's an organized Chinese menu. Each of them at the end have a recipe, but it's a very scary ghost story. So each story I will have, a, you know, target one social problem in modern China. There's also one story was about the uh, organ harvesting of the prisoner and the corruption of a medical system. So when I finished that book, I was interviewed on uh, in a television station in San Francisco. And I just know the Chinese embassy are watching. So the station was, uh, the, the hostess was from Taiwan. She read my book, she loves it. And she really wanted me to get into this political aspect of it. And I just know I sh if I do that, I would never be able to go back to China. I said, no, 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 it's just a ghost story. Let's talk about ghosts, let's talk about food. So you really have to read very carefully about what my true intention is. So I'm very glad, and uh, people in Europe get it, and I won a very big award in Europe, and uh, also in state, not as many <laughs> than the revolution, but in very popular in Europe, this book. And also, um, on my last selling on Crystal, the wife of the, the producer's wife, from, uh, producer Harry Potter, she loves my book. She brought this back to UK, so now one of the producer there is looking at it. I have a couple producers tell me is they love the book, but they are very afraid if they produce this, they will upset the Chinese government. So we will see what happened. So of course, when I, uh, this one was done, the San Francisco Chronicle did another feature. So this time we did it, uh, with they have my picture taken in the graveyard. We walk around for almost uh, um, half an hour to look at the old tombstone because the photographer said, I really don't want to get a call from people say, why are you taking picture in front of my grandfather's tomb? So we want to make sure there's no writing on any of the tomb. 
Now, um, some of you may know, if you visit my website, I am a few writers, write different genres, and I write picture books, I write novels, and also I write cookbooks. And when I started my career, I tried to write a, you know, cookbooks and the picture book. My second agent told me, saying, um, very few writers can be successful. You really should just focus on one. I said, but I don't want to. I want to write what I feel writing. So <laughs> I said, just watch me. I can make this work. So the way I make it work is you can see, even my picture book, food is an important thing through all my story. And I have a recipe at the back at all my book. It's I teach, uh, you know, I want to not only share the Chinese tradition culture to the, stu uh, the, the readers and also about cooking. And uh, all my uh, fiction, food is a very important metaphor, and I have some of the have recipe as well. And this is uh, one of my newest picture book, which is just uh, featured on New York Times. And uh, it took me 10 years to write this book, believe it or not. I start this book um, after my father passed away. Uh, my son was two years old. So every time when I walk down the street, I saw a grandfather and a grandson. I keep picture what their relationship would be like, how wonderful it would be if my father's still alive. So that's what inspired me to write this book. It took me many, many years to get it just right. So, and this is a grandpa and grandson uh, practice Tai Chi together. Cooking, and cooking is a, you know, I love to cook. And, and at any given time, I will be working on two or three books at the same time. I get bored very easy. I will work on my fiction and I will work on a cookbook. And when I'm not working on a cookbook, I will write for a magazine article. I was Master Stewart's food editor for three years. So I have my own food column. So some weeks I have developed 14 recipes. And I have fun because uh, developing recipe is very focused. You have to be precise. And then after a while, it get really boring. Then I switch to my fiction writing. And that was fun. I was teaching uh, some guests how to make dumplings. This is my new cookbook. And it took me a long time to write this book. And I was very honored. Dr. Andrew Wow, we worked together for a long time. And the Master Stewart and they gave me a very nice uh, a quote, endorsement. And uh, <coughs> I learned so much from him. This is, I live my life, you know, based on his teaching, anti-inflammatory diet. And when I'm hosting the dinner, I will later I would like to see I can pick up the set of the menu. We'll f follow his uh, teaching because that's how I eat a lot. As those of you have dinner with me, I, I eat. I think about food all the time, but I eat very healthy. <coughs> I do a cooking show. I have been on many cooking shows, and this is the one. I was also the spokesperson, actually, I'm still, for Nasty, uh, the Asian brand. This is, I hosted 20 episodes at uh, Nasty headquarters. And this is uh, the book, it was just uh, in one week. It was like a Boston Globe, Mercury News, my publisher was just thrilled, very happy. And this is some of the food from the book. I'm sorry, I only have one copy of the book here, and I will leave at the library when, before I leave. And uh, you're welcome to look at this. Uh, when I uh, <coughs> travel, people always ask me, say, can you uh, bring some of your book for sale? I said, no, 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 I have 20 books. Which of my children should, should, should I bring? And I, I decided just, I just be easy for me. I brought three copies of my book, three titles. You're welcome to look. You can, uh, it's easy. My book is everywhere, so you can, if you want to look at it, and I think the head office was sent on to the library as well. This is one of the feature article I uh, wrote for Eating Well. And that's uh, what I do. Whenever I get bored of writing books, I will uh, tell one of the food editors, I say, okay, I think I have time to write a feature for you guys. So I would do a feature, and I w did a lot of writing for Cooking Night and all the health magazine. This is my son's favorite recipe. He, like I said, he's a cross-country runner. He has a gold medal at the state championship. Every time before his race, he need a cup, he need a protein. So potato beef stew. Wild salmon. Um, this is a soy green tea smoothie. I eat this every day after my exercise before I start writing. And uh, this is a fruit yogurt smoothie. No, sh I, I use a lot of soy instead of dairy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, green tea ice cream. And uh, so you can eat dessert and eat healthy. I'm passionate about healthy eating. I could go on talking about this, and I hope later on I will have a chance to talk about and you know, uh, just focus on more about the cooking. 
And let's see, I think my slideshow somehow get it. Oh yeah, this is just uh, showing you what's like to be on the cooking sh show, people. And it's a lot of work. So even though like you see, you know, every time you watch this episode, like uh, you wear different clothes, you saw they filmed different day, but no, I f do five episodes a day. So this is what happened. The minute I finish one episode, the food stylist, they will work on the food and the wardrobe person will dress me up and the one doing my hair, one dress me up. And they will already bought all the clothes before I even get there with the earring, everything organized, which is great for me and I struggle with that always. And <laughs> this is a producer telling him, tell me, hurry up. And then I have to look really calm. So then we do the, so at the end of the show, um, my family was with me. I was there for a week. I told them, don't say a word to me because I do not want to talk to anyone. And it was like a, all day you're dealing with 10 people at a time. And then next morning, do it again. Okay, I want to show you my name. This is in Chinese, Yin. is the most difficult Chinese character. And I'm very proud with this name now. That's because uh, when I was young, I was very upset. My father gave me this name because it's so difficult to write. Everybody else have a much simpler name. So, <laughs> and the meaning of this is wind, victory, and, and ocean. The data I find out is because I had two elder brothers. My mother said, no, 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 I'm done. I don't want to have any more children. And my father said, I know the next one will be a girl. My mother said, no, I think it's another son. And uh, so my father won. So he gave me this name, Victory. So I was his, yeah, precious daughter. <coughs> and I also then, I share the same name as first emperor of China, Emperor Qing. So uh, this is a very unusual name. So since I was young, I was fascinated with uh, Emperor Qing. Uh, he's the one built the Great Wall and the terracotta soldier, I'm sure all of you know. And I went to uh, Xi'an, I spent uh, quite a bit of time with my son around there. This is a modern model they made. This is what I think, you know, his tomb and with Mercury River, river surrounding it. So <coughs> when my son was in high school, he started helping me uh, working with, um, you know, emails and I answered my fan mails when he was in middle school. So when he was in high school, he became very busy. I barely see him. He got uh, on Facebook and uh, Twitter and uh, running. And I f just sensed I'm going to lose him. He's going to go to college in two years. And I'm going through this mourning process. I said, what can I do to make him stuck with me every day? And uh, no excuse to go out. Write a book, right? <laughs> so he foolishly enough to agree because I agreed to give him 5% of the advance which he thought was a lot of money. So we worked together and we spent one year, this is just first chapter, we worked together. And it's a bittersweet experience. I tell all your mother that. And the teenager, you know, that was uh, quite, ex but it was so wonderful, you know. I got him five hours a day with me when he's not in s uh, at the weekend, we have to work. So after that, we took a trip to Xi'an. And we met the first farmer on Earth, the first terracotta soldier. And he told us all the fascinating stories, the secret trap, the tomb. I can give you a whole lecture about our research and this. It's just fascinating. And uh, you know, the, the, the secret trap, my son was fasc most fascinated about that. And the tomb robbers. And, what, and uh, we went to visit the, the modern factory, how they make the terracotta soldier. They use the mold. But in olden days, it was modeled really after the each of the, the soldier. And this is how they uh, figured out they cannot bake them together because they tend to explode. So they have the, the body in one oven and the head in the other. So when we came back home, <coughs> I told him, I said, Vincent, I think the whole second part of the book has to be thrown away. We have to rewrite this book. He's almost just, just go crazy. He said, no, mom, we worked for the year. I said, no. I said, Vincent, this is not good enough. So we sent it to our editor. He did disagree with me. I know the book was not good enough. The editor wrote us a very, very, not so polite, angry email. He said, In, I always thought you're a great writer, and I'm quite disappointed about this book. And uh, I'm so I can't imagine what else it could be because you co-authored with your son. So I sat there, I read it. When Vincent came home, I sat him down. I said, Vincent, I would really like you to spend uh, half an hour read this email. 
couple of times, and then we can talk. After he read the email, he came out, he told me, he said, Mom, I would do whatever I can to make this book the best can be. I was almost cried. I was so touched. So that's when we sat down. We had a contract and how we're going to do this. And so we rewrote the whole book. This is the old kitchen timer I used when he was young. He started piano lesson when he was three years old. So for every half an hour, he get a five minutes break and practice another half hour. So now he's older, so I gave him, every hour I give him 10 minutes break to go on Facebook. <laughs> so in the contract, I said, every day we're gonna work five hours together. And if you have a school, we do three hours. And for then you get a 10 minutes on Facebook. But if I catch you, get on the Facebook before the hour is over, I'm going to find you half an hour. And the second time I find you, I'm going to find you an hour. So after working with me a couple, 10 hours a day, and he got it. That's when we, I fe finally feel he's a very good writer. And I finally see our books just changed. It went to another level. It was really focused. And it uh, was at a point my editor tell me, say, in the book is perfect. Stop working on it. I said, Vincent said, no, no, no. We can make this sentence just a little better. We practically worked a day before he went to college. And even when he was in college, we Skyped every three days. We still worked on So the book just listed at one of the three top book um, by one of the morning called newspaper. And uh, on his 20th birthday, at spring break, we went to New York last March. <coughs> and uh, we did a uh, book signing. You know, it was really rewarding. This time, all the kids focus on Vincent. They want to be like him. So they, yeah, I was just, I just sit back and watch them. And uh, we, I, two days before I came on this, I was in Las Vegas, and uh, I was, we were presenting at the uh, AOA, the biggest uh, librarian association. We were doing a huge book signing, and uh, we did a cooking stage demo too. My son, he's a great cook. He's been on many cooking shows with me. He did the most of the cooking chopping. I just said that, talked to people. It was wonderful. And uh, all the people lined up trying to try their food. I would love to do a cooking demo with you guys one day. I think it would be fun. And we signed the book for hours. And <laughs> so it's just the whole LA people. And it was just very satisfying. I feel, and, uh, you know, when Vincent gave a talk, he told people what he learned. He said he learned all the, hard, all the success have to, you know, there's a lot of hard work began, uh, behind each successful book. And that was a very important lesson. Also, he said, taught him a very good as, uh, working asset. At the school, he goes to USC. He said all the other students, they wait until uh, his, uh, he said, uh, sorority house, and other kids wait until last minute to do the homework. He said he just know how to manage his time, still have good, uh, have a good, have fun. So. My most exciting news is when I was uh, on my last selling and I was lecturing in China, I was visiting eight international schools and I met with the uh, head of the director of Oriental DreamWorks. So they are reading the book and uh, considering uh, the movie uh, deal for this book. And I don't know, I'm holding my breath and I'm also going to meet five producers while we get to Singapore. Actually, I'm going to meet one tonight. And um, we've been emailed and he's telling me where to meet him. I said, no. I'm getting lost very easy. Could you just come to meet me outside of the, the, the where we're going to duck? He said, sure. So he's going to meet me outside the, the port. So this is, uh, you know, even though, it, you know, my son is very happy, I'm happy. My publisher is thrilled. And that's the end of my uh, presentation for this. If we have time, I would love to show you a very quick um, a cooking segment. Do you guys want to watch, uh, watch a cooking segment before question? So that way, hopefully, we'll inspire you to sign up for the dinner, right? So we'll have fun. So this is the one I did on our Discovery Channel. <coughs> it's very short. Now that you've made art out of your cups and saucers, what are you going to do with your teapot? We'll get the answer from the author of Cooking with Green Tea, Ying Chang Compostine. Hey, welcome to Home Matters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me first of all,
of all, for anybody who doesn't know what green tea is, tell me what the difference between black tea, which we traditionally have in the tea bags that we buy in the grocery store, and green tea. Well, they're all from the same plant. And the, the main difference is the green tea is not fermented, and the black tea is fully fermented. And how much green tea should one drink per day for all the health benefits that it offers? Well, the research show you need to have four cups of green tea a day oh to get God. all the full benefit, which is, you know, in today's life, everybody's so busy, and we don't have time to drink four cups of tea. And I've grown up in China, and I ate a lot of dishes made with green tea, so I decided, well, I can write a book about cooking with green tea, and show the American yeah. audience how you can incorporate green tea in your diet. Without having to drink it. And this is one of the dishes. This is just one of the one, many in the dish in yes. the book that we're going to make today. Tell me the name of this recipe. This is an emperor's shrimp. Mm. And, uh, Which shrimp. emperor? Ying? Or is there some dynasty of... Uh... Well, we have many uh, emperors. Okay. <laughs> I think they all like the green tea. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> okay. First, uh, <laughs> sorry. Just kind of, so, you know. Let's start. And I have some tea leaves infused already. And so um, that makes some kind of... Uh, they can... See, this is uh, before they were... Yeah, so this like is called... Well, tell me the name of this This again. is a gum powder. Gum oh, powder gum. tea. And that's because it's all kind of pellety. It's yeah, it looks like up. a little bullet. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, I'm going to just mince some uh, tea leaves. And this almost looks like spinach when it's reconstituted yes. with hot water. Think, when you brew green tea, think about it like you're uh, handling the very fragile vegetables. So you don't want to brew them for a very long time and high temperature. Like two minutes? Uh, about three minutes, okay. in a three to four minutes. But when for cooking, sometimes I do about a, you know five minutes. Right. Here we have some tea already. Now let's you talk just a little bit about the tea kettle. Um, you have a you're very opinionated about what you should boil water in or yeah, serve tea. Yeah, you in. know, in, traditionally in China you use the Yixing teapot, which is this teapot you can buy at a lot of a special uh, store. And, Why is this uh, so good? Because it's made with a special clay from the southeast China. And they bring out the best flavor of tea. But at home, when you don't have it, you can use, uh, you know, a stainless steel porcelain. Or porcelain. And you need to rinse it out with the hot water and pour it out. Yeah, yeah. You always warm up your, you know, warm up your cup uh -huh. before you. Are. Here, Ooh. shall we? I'm going to make a oh, sesame. Strong. Yeah. It's good. Good strong. Good? Yes. Should we make the sesame sauce? Sesame sauce, please. Okay. And here's some already infused tea leaves. I minced it, and this is some uh, teriyaki sauce. Okay. And the green onion. Green onion. Mm. And lemon juice. I think the audience likes this. They, they were already, yeah. I, I wish they could smell it. it and there's some uh, fresh chili pepper. Yum, that'll give it some heat, which is and good. And uh, minced garlic. Yes. And we have some toasted sesame seeds. Does the tea actually give it flavor, or is that just the property? It's just an excuse to... Actually, the, the, the tea gives out very nice, very nice uh, flavor, and it really give your food a very unique, fresh now, I'm taste. I'm assuming that was sesame, sesame oil. Sesame oil. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's I okay. <laughs> okay, here's we have some, uh, yeah, the nice. sauce. Nice. And I have some cornstarch. And that's just to kind of thicken, right? The thicken, yeah, the sauce. Cornstarch is in a lot of, not just green tea cooking, but in a lot of Chinese cooking. Yeah, yeah well, Chinese use a lot, yeah, in uh, cornstarch. Yeah. And now we're going to... Marinate. Now, how long would you marinate with shrimp? Does it take a long time to marinate shrimp? Yeah, you know, this one, I, you know, this recipe, I said ideally at least for half an hour. If you have time, a little longer would be better. But always cover it and refrigerate it. Tell me how long, while well, I'm going to put this, there's one that we've got in the refrigerator. Tell me how long you've been drinking tea. Oh, since I was three years old. Really? And I always, uh, yeah, and, you know, drink tea from my father's cup. And that's just a... So it's not baby. something like in this country when people start drinking coffee, they have to be like driving age almost to start yeah. drinking coffee. Okay, now this one's been marinated yep. now. It's, it's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, now, okay. the kind of, you, you're again using sesame oil or just a lighter This is oil? A, just a, a cooking oil. Okay. And I'm going to use, I have some gum powder. Tea. E tea. And we use this as a seasoning. Gunpowder green tea. Gunpowder green tea. <laughs> yeah. We're not just putting gunpowder gun in powder the bowl. <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to create a little excitement. So, can you smell Get the... Get that drill on my glass. Can you smell the fragrance? Mmm. So, yes. it's really interesting, and too. And it's going to be unfold. It's just, it's like a magic. It kind See? of unfolds in there. Yeah. See, when the oil gets heated up. And I love it that you're using all these colorful, wonderful vegetables. So do we put those in first or the shrimp no, first? No, we'll do the shrimp first. Shall we? And a uh, little bit too much sauce in this one. That's, That's all right. Fish. We can probably be fine, yeah. Yeah, we'll be oh, Okay. Fine. And it's we like noisy food here. Woohoo! <laughs> and the shrimp cook really fast. 
Now do I put the vegetables in? Uh, let's just wait a couple mm, minutes. Now do I put them in? <laughs> Almost. Tell me some other properties, just briefly. So I know that it, you, you literally wrote a book on the properties of green tea, but just tell me some of the, the proven properties. Yeah, you know, Chinese, in, in, in my book, there's one section I talk about other use of green other tea. Other uses, yes. You know, we use for beauty purpose. Like I rinse my hair with very strong green tea. green tea, make it shine and look nice. And also, uh, uh, cold green tea help with sunburn, and the warm green tea help treat the pimples and the rashes. Does it? Does it? Would it help Chris in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> uh, so that's added vegetable. But it also has like it has like you can lose weight drinking green yes, tea. Yes, and also in my book I have a three-day green tea diet program help cleanse in your body and also help uh, you know weight loss pr promote the weight loss. Is there anything green tea can't do? Well. Housework probably can't do that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you can clean you inside, but maybe you can't clean yeah, the tub with it. But you do yeah. feel very good. After you get used to see, this is some um, toasted nuts, mm. and uh, we're going to add that in. Again, you, you know, at home, you don't just limit to shrimp. You can use chicken or vegetarian. You can use tofu. Ooh, that I cook good. a lot. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of that. I love You're tofu. And also the sauce I, I like to make then at the weekend. I make a, I have like a whole section with sauce. You make like three or four sauce at the weekend and you refrigerate it. They will last up to a week and make your weeknight cooking very easy. Yeah, and once you get that sauce going, you can <coughs> add, like you say, chicken, or whatever. Yep. All right, I want to... I, I want to ask Chris. Chris is out in the audience. Chris, do you have somebody that I know you want to taste it, but do you have somebody else that might want to taste because it? Because I need those green tea, tea properties. Now, who would like to taste? Who here would like to taste? Pick a good who one, would like Chris. To, come on, man. let's go. No, no, him. Come on, dude. Come on, let's go. from Iowa what's your name Keith Keith from Iowa Keith that's what a lovely city in beer. Iowa are you from a little bird called Grundy Center uh, See, people Grundy are gonna be Center. glad that you said that Grundy Center I know that town do you use chopsticks do they use them there not in Grundy Center. a little but I'm Can not have a fork good at here? it fork yeah we fork. have a fork all right <laughs> that would be better <laughs> okay just go for it go for it all right yeah now get a little oh. bit of shrimp in there oh Keith. actually actually okay. honest reaction Keith think about it Say use it. over it this is very good. Ah. Very Thank nice. you. Now, if everybody in the audience is getting hungry for think and thinking about cooking with green tea, we've got the recipe and a green tea bag from MightyLeaf.com underneath your seats. Yes. So you can uh, get started once you get home. Yeah. Thank you so much. Beautiful stuff. Here. It's great having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thanks for that. Stay right here. Don't go away, because all matters will be... Okay. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? <coughs> all right, now, question time. Oh, by the way, I have to say, huh? I did a couple show with uh, this hostess. I never know what she's going to say. <laughs> it's like, not only I, my job is I need to make sure my dish get cooked at that time. I need to make sure I answer the question correctly. I have to, con you know, pretty, uh, sometimes I take a lot of concentration to do both things at the same time. Anyway, okay, question. Do you have any questions? Yes. How, um, what age did you leave China and what age did you return back to China? Um, I left China when I was 23 years old. So I stayed in the state and uh, I traveled back and forth pretty often. Yeah, I left China for graduate school. Any other questions? So how long will, how long will you be with us? Uh, how long would I be with you? Yeah, we are on the ship. Till bur night, right? Bur night. Till bur night. That's, I that's see. another week and a half, a week. So, so there is a time for you to do the cooking show. <laughs> I, uh, I think if we can get and set it up, sure. Or maybe it's better have the yeast, have the chef follow my recipe, do the cooking. What do you guys think? I, I can go. I cook think less. yeast chef is a professional. I think uh, we would like to see yours. You want to cook with me? I'd be happy to. That would be so fun. You know what? When every time when I cook with people, I, I did a huge fundraising for one of the library in my city. All the people came to my cooking. Uh, the thing. They dressed. All the gentlemen dressed in their business suit, and all the ladies dressed up very gracefully, beautiful. I dressed up that night too, and S I told them. I said, you know what? I'm not going to get my clothes dirty tonight, so you're going to have to make your own dinner. 
So I divided them into the groups, and the separ you know, each of them responsible for one recipe. I said, at the end, let's vote. See who have the best recipe and who did the best job. So they got into that. Yeah. Sorry, that I didn't say I'm going to do cooking with you. Maybe I don't have a time, probably. But somebody would like to volunteer to cook with you, definitely. <laughs> so we can <laughs> Then you can eat with OK. That would do. You know, that I'm sure so I can find a few volunteers. Thank you very yeah, much. Sure. That's sweet. Uh, yeah, we can work on that. Uh, do you still maintain a? Do you still maintain Chinese uh, citizenship? No. Um, I after you had American citizenship, I don't think they allowed you to. No, I don't have a Chinese citizenship anymore. Which it I wish I do because every time I go back to China, I have to go apply the visa. I have to pay quite a bit of money to get uh, the visa. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, yes. Is your son continuing to write? Do you think he'll be an author professionally? Uh, oh, I so wish he is here. He get asked this a lot. And he is, um, um, he tell people, he said now he want to focus on finish his college first. His second year at the USC, he studied computer and business. And uh, this summer, I did give him a choice. The editor's dying for us to write another book. I said, Vincent, you probably make more money to write another book with him. He's a ha ha mom. I probably work much. You know, he said you are the toughest boss I could ever imagine. So he worked for a, a, a computer company in LA, <laughs> <laughs> not working for his mother because you know he, he yeah. So he said, "Mom, working for other people is so easy compared to work for you." What did you study in college, and who's your publisher? Okay, I studied English mm -hmm. in in China. I have a degree in English literature, and after I graduate, I work for Chinese government as an interpreter for the Seismological Bureau for two years. So then I went to the United States. I started with linguistic for graduate school. Then I just found it's really boring. Uh, what I really fascinated is I want to find, so how could these two si systems so differently? So I decided to switch to sociology. So I have a degree in sociology. And my publisher, I'm one of those writers, they, you know, in publishing world, there's a joke, you don't sleep around, which I do. I have eight publishers because I write too fast. And uh, most publishers, they only want to promote your book. Like all my publishers, they put a lot of energy to promote one book e a season. So like last year, I have two books come out, but they're from two different publishers. They all promote me differently. So I get a, you know, a best PR promotion. Um, I, so at this point, I just, uh, I always work, <laughs> you know, all the publishers want my next fiction and the cookbook, but I always, I try to figure if they just publish one of my work, if they did a good job, I would go back to them. If I don't, then I think one of the editor I feel I like better, I would just go with a different publisher. Who's been your favorite publisher? Um, who's my favorite publisher? I think it would depend on what you look at. I think Holt, Henry Holt, it was, did a very good job with Revolution. And Abram, the one just did a terracotta, they did a fabulous job too. So uh, they are tied because I know two editors both want my next fiction. They try very hard to make me happy. Actually, um, before I forget, I'm going to give a talk in Singapore tomorrow night. It was arranged by uh, Abram, the, the one did a terracotta. I told them I would be in Singapore two weeks before I left. Their uh, sub-agent arranged a very uh, nice event. I, you are invited if you'd like to come with me is uh, the first uh, Singapore Paramount House. Is, uh, you will meet the whole the literary world people. I don't know, I have no, every time I go to event, I have, don't know what I expect, but uh, according to my publisher, it's a big deal. So they will have a refreshment and they're gonna do s just one hour, seven to eight, and they will interview me. I don't know what they're gonna ask. Every time I go in there, they will ask me some interesting questions so about writing. So we focus more on writing. For those of you especially think about writing books, want to know more. And I think some publisher will be there. And one reason I want to do this is because my book are banned in China. So I want to see if I can sell the right, have the right sell in, in Singapore and then have some book available in Chinese version. Yes. Can you tell me about your brothers as you were growing up and uh, your relationship with them? And oh. did they protect you uh, during the hard times? Um, I have two elder brothers. <coughs> they are one is nine years older than me, one is ten years older than me. Actually, no, they did not protect me. As a matter of fact, if you read the Revolution, you will see the Liu, the character. It was based on my elder brother. 
during the revolution, um, he turned against my father. He, one day he came home, he said he wanted to draw a class line between him and the family. It was a terrible, mem you know, very difficult time for me to understand. Uh, in the book, you know, every day we were taught Chairman Mao is our dear father. He's more dear than our mother and father. We need to worship him. And, you know, when I was a little girl, even though I don't know better, I often wonder, how could he be more dear to my, than my father? Would he let me put a ponytail on him? Because that's one thing I like to do, put a ponytail on my father when I was a little girl. So I have a lot of questions in my head. When my brother came home, the, you know, wanted to draw a cross line, I was, I just hated him. And until I finished the book, I went back to China. I, oh, oh, my whole adult life, I was very distant towards my older brother. I made a point to spend uh, two weeks in his home in Wuhan. And we had a talk for the first time. And I tried to understand why he did what he did. And I feel like I can understand. Uh, I, uh, we, we, pretty, we have a good relationship now because what he was going through then is in China at the time, for young people, for young men, the most glorified thing is join the Red Army. It's like a football player for today. So my brother wanted to join the Red Army and he passed all the exam and uh, the day when he was there waiting to receive his uniform, Comrade Lee sent somebody from the hospital, went there, said, you cannot take this bourgeois child. So they sent him home. And that's when he just devastated. And he worked in the, fa both my brother worked in the factory for many years. And later on, uh, they educate themselves. My older brother, now you retired, he's traveled around China. And uh, it was funny, we compare travel photo, that's all he can afford. So he traveled around China. And my younger brother uh, now is a professor at the university. I'm more close to him, but I don't quite remember they really protect him because they have to deal with their world, their older. What I do remember is um, I borrowed my younger brother's belt with the metal buckle. When I walked down that long alleyway to school, I wear that belt and one day I have to take off that belt to defend myself, which is like in the book. And so that, that I still remember. Any final questions? And thank you very much to Jing Chang Compostine. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>